There are two types of men on this earth. Those with realistic goals and those who dare to dream. If you clicked on this video, you are from the second category. When you visualize your perfect physique, what you see isn't just some weak six-pack or a little bit of muscle on your chest. Instead, you picture a hunk of mass and veins, the likes of which would give your average lifter nightmares. If this sounds like you, I welcome thee to the Zod training program. When it comes to looking like a buzzer character, the evident choice for a lot of men will be Guts, seeing as how massive and aesthetic his physique is. And yet, there exists an even more formidable monster within the pages of the story. A creature so great that he earned the title of Immortal. Zod is an apostle, a former man who sacrificed his humanity in exchange for unlimited powers, something reflected by his body. With his humongous arms that are twice the size of an average man's leg, he is able to cut through bodies like tofu, single-handedly wielding a sword that would give even the strongest of soldiers trouble. On it, the biceps especially look ridiculous, with the triceps appearing as if trying to devour the arm itself. Jacked forearms completing this ghastly portrait of limb muscularity. His large shoulders, both the circumference of a human skull, are connected to his ridiculously thick neck by traps the likes of which would make even top-level strongmen blush. A yoke so enormous it could turn any shirts into v-necks. He's far from what the average human can hope to look like, making even Guts and Pippin look small. And yet, I believe it is possible to obtain his physique, minus the monstrous proportions, Zod being 7 feet 3 and 360 pounds in his human form. Bodybuilding being a game of illusion, achieving a similar look is doable as long as you match the muscular distribution of our favorite immortal. And this is where I intervene. For the past few months, I've been working on a training program designed specifically to help you reach that goal physique. And it is my great pleasure to present it to you today. This regimen will prioritize the development of the biceps, triceps, shoulders, and upper back yoke, as all these areas are supremely dominant in Zod's physique. The abs, forearms, quads, erectors, and calves will also receive a decent amount of work, as they don't lag too far behind. As for the posterior chain and chest, which are Zod's weak points, they will be deprioritized, but never ignored. For those of you that have followed my guts program, the differences will be that this training will have you train legs twice as much via an extra lower day, alongside additional arm and back work that will up the overall upper body volume. This is due to the fact that both Zod's legs, arms and yoke are more dominant than guts. But for the rest, it will be relatively similar meaning that if you successfully run the GUTS program, which you can find in the description, you will have an easy time transitioning to this one. Just make sure you keep an eye out for recovery, as going from 4 to 5 days of training a week not only increases volume, but also frequency, which makes managing fatigue more difficult, although I made sure to come up with ways to facilitate that for you, by creating two templates, each of which showcases the same exercises, but with a different weekly split, to help you pick the one that works best for you. If you are only at the beginning of your lifting journey, or have never run one of my programs before, 
I highly encourage you to either start with my novice program or select either one of the Baki or Tokita Oma ones you can find in the description. My methods can be hard on people with low work capacity. And this program in particular is high in autoregulation, meaning you'll need to make choices on the fly, an extra flexibility that intermediates or advanced lifters will appreciate, but that can confuse new trainees. If this is you, have no shame. We all start somewhere, and achieving the Zod physique will take years anyways. So there is no reason for you to rush, as every monster ultimately had to start small. So the program is a five days a week, two uppers, two lowers, one arm split. And right off the bat, you're going to realize that I don't have you train neck. You're still going to develop that muscle, but I did not include it directly in the template because in an effort to give you more flexibility, I'm only going to give you a rep goal, meaning that I expect you to hit between 100 and 180 reps of neck curls a week. And to do that, you have from 10 to 12 sets you can distribute evenly throughout the days, wherever there is place for you, meaning that you will end up supersetting neck with something else in the program. The guidelines are to never go lower than 10 reps and never higher than 20 and you have a cap of 4 sets max per day. I do that to make sure you don't end up doing all of your reps on one day, which would just be junk volume, which should also ensure that your recovery is going to be maximized. Now, when it comes to the actual program, you start on Monday with upper 1, and the first exercise is going to be either a farmer's walk or a block pull, both of which are going to grow your yoke and your traps tremendously. The farmer's walk are of course much more taxing on the overall system, while the rack pulls are going to be more taxing on the lower back. If you want to do only one in the program, do only one. If you want to rotate, you can rotate. It is up to you. You should be at a level where this choice should be easy for you to make. As for the rack pulls, it's a higher rep range because my goal is really to help the weight stretch your upper back and grow your traps as much as possible, while also lowering the amount of posterior chain work because you're going to pull off of a block or off of a rack. You will do these below the knee. And then you superset that with dumbbell or cable curls, your first bicep exercise, three sets of 10 to 12. For any rep range, again, report to the description. Then we move on to your vertical press, dumbbells or barbells, depending on what you like. It's 3 to 5 sets, 6 to 12 reps. So a ton of volume, this is your only vertical press. But it's not your only shoulder exercise. This is why I gave you so much space. If you want to do more volume, you can, because from 3 to 5 sets is almost double the volume you could get if you just stick to 3 sets with the 6 to 12. And then superset that with bent over lateral raises for more rear delt work, more upper back work. Then you finish the giant set with dumbbell or cable tricep extension. Both of which should of course be done behind the head. This is a long head exercise. And also 3 to 5 sets, 8 to 14. So this is the biggest amount of sets available in the program. It is 5 and that is going to give you a lot of flexibility to decide how much volume you want to do for these body parts. And then we finish up the day with cable rows if you decide you want more upper back work or bench if you want some chest work. You are much more likely to do bench on this one. Again, the OR is a variation, so it's absolutely possible you do both in the program and on any given day, you decide on the day where you're going to train which one you want to do. Then finger curls or hammer curl, more forearm or more bicep, up to you again, four sets of 12 to 15. And we wrap up with windshield wipers, 4 sets, as many reps as possible. This is your direct ab isolation movement for the day. Tuesday is your lower one. And we start with a heavy knee flexion. So either a barbell squat or an SSB squat. You could also do some belt squats, some hack squats. All of that is free for you to decide. And we're going to do higher rep range. So either 4 sets of 6 to 10 or 4 sets of 8 to 12. And you superset that with some sitting calf raises, 4 sets of 15 to 20. I know it's not the sexiest exercise, but do not skip your calf raises. Zod has big calves, and if you want big calves, you have to start training them. 
Then we move on to lat pull downs, pronated or neutral grip, not supinated grip, for set of 10 to 15, and then superset with dumbbell hyperextensions or leg curls for more posterior chain work for sets of 15 to 20. And then to get more quad volume, quad works, because Zod's quads are monstrously big, you do some single leg press or some split squats for sets of 10 to 15. This could be any movement that is going to deload the lower back and put a lot of stretch on the quads. Then some hip thrust or single leg Romanian deadlifts for sets of 8 to 12 for more arm strength development and glute development. And we wrap up the day with Captain of Crush. It's a grip implement. You're going to do four sets as many reps as possible for the development of the forearm. The next upper day, upper two, is going to be on Thursday. So you're going to get one day to recover on Wednesday in between these two quote-unquote cycles. And for this one, we open with an hybrid press. So an incline press or a Viking press. I encourage you to find a variation that still hits the chest. We do not want to bias the shoulder too much. But because Zod's shoulders are so much bigger than his chest, we are not doing a straight up horizontal press. So the Viking press is going to be reserved for those of you that really do not need the chest work. And that is going to be 4 sets of 6 to 10. You could also do decline or handstand push-ups if you wanted, 4 sets as many reps as possible. This could also be a rotation. And the superset for this one is face pose, 4 sets of 15 to 20. You're going to train the shoulders a ton in this program, so you need to keep them healthy. And direct external rotation is going to make sure that your shoulders stay balanced. You don't end up with a very strong front delt and no real delt at all. Then we do some heavy weighted chin-ups, four sets of four to eight. I recommend doing them weighted. If you're not able to do them weighted, you can always do as many reps as possible. These could also be supinated lat pull downs, four sets of eight to 12. Superset that with some skull crushers or French press. You cannot neglect that portion of the triceps. Yes, the presses will take care of some of the muscle, but not all of it. Four sets of 6 to 12. After that, you have another chance at more chest development, chest flies, or preacher curls if you prefer to do more biceps. Four sets of 8 to 20. It's a weird rep range. The reason for that is because I want you to use weight you can handle easily because both movements can be risky with heavy weight. But I also know that you're going to be pre-fatigued in both areas. So you will find that your muscle can actually lose endurance extremely quick on these movements. Hence why the rep range is so wide. Then some upright rows or lateral raises. Four sets of 10 to 12. 10 to 15 would also be fine for more direct shoulder work. And your one movement for ab isolation is going to be leg raises, four sets, as many reps as possible. So as you can see, a lot of choice in the program. The rep ranges give you a high ability of controlling volume. And the intensity is still relatively high, even though I have you stick with higher rep ranges for the extra work. For your lower two on Friday, we're going to start with a heavy hip hinge. So it's going to be either a deadlift, three sets of five, or Romanian deadlifts, four sets of eight to 12. As you can tell, it's not a ton of volume if you choose to do deadlifts, it's because you really don't need to do that much volume for that lift to be effective. You could also choose to do some good mornings, three sets of six to 10, but you would lose some upper back development. Then superset that with standing calf raises, three to four sets of 10 to 15. Your next sets are going to be hang cleans or power cleans, four sets of eight to 10. So more yoke and upper back development with some posterior chain work as well. And these movements, even though they are technical, are not that hard to learn or to master. I highly suggest you choose the one you have the most fun doing. Then you're going to do some GHR or snatch grip hyperextensions, four sets of 10 to 12 works perfectly fine and some towel grips. If you don't know what a towel grip is, it's simple, you take a plate, loop a towel through it, grab the towel, stand up, and try to hold for between 15 to 30 seconds. And then we wrap up the day with hack squats or leg press, four sets of 10 to 15, anything again that is going to bias the quad and deload the lower back. Superset that with some barbell snatch grip shrugs or dumbbell shrugs, whichever you prefer, to completely finish the upper back and the yoke, four sets of 12 to 15. 
and some captain of crush four sets as many reps as possible so your upper back and forearms should be absolutely busted by the end of this training journey Now, if you're looking at this and you think it's too much and your upper back cannot take it, it very well might be that you don't have the work capacity for it. Of course, training upper back every single day is difficult, but the area can absolutely take it if you habituate it. And if you want to get to a Zod upper back, you are going to have to up the frequency. If you look at the way I programmed, it's not random. Specific areas of the back get targeted on specific days so as to make sure you always have time to recover in between sessions. And on top of that, I always manage your lower back fatigue to make sure it never becomes the limiting factor. And then the last day of the program is an arm day on Saturday, which you'll start with a close grip bench or dips. So a movement that is going to target the chest, the shoulders and the triceps. This is your one horizontal press in the entire program. Four sets of 6 to 10. You could also do diamond push-ups if you wanted. Four sets as many reps as possible. Then superset that with some seal or penle rows. Four sets of 8 to 12. We then move on to more direct arm work because it's an arm day. But a good arm day has compound movements if you're more advanced so as to make sure you get as much volume as possible for the upper body. Here the bicep movement is a barbell or easy bar curls for 4 sets of 6 to 10, so it's a relatively high intensity for the movement. Then triceps pushdowns, 4 sets of 10 to 15. And then we finish the shoulders with lateral raises. You could do Arnold or Lou raises if you like them better, 4 sets of 12 to 15. After that, more forearm work. But this time, it's not going to be in a static stretch position or a crush position but more elbow flexion. So it's going to also include some potential wrist flexion. That way you get a total workout for the forearms and you don't neglect certain muscles. Start with towel or pinwheel curls, four sets of eight to 12. That is going to target the brachialis. Then some reverse curls or supinated finger curls for more direct forearm work, four sets of 10 to 12. And then your ab isolation movement, decline sit-ups, four sets as many reps as possible. So as you can see, this is a program that has a very high frequency for certain body parts like the biceps, the triceps, the shoulders, the traps, the upper back in general and the neck. But because the volume is not too high on all of these days, you should always be able to recover for the next session. And then movements for the abs, the forearms, the quads are also present as well. The posterior chain will absolutely be hit. I made sure to not neglect or forget any body part because even though Zod's chest and glutes and armstrings are slightly weaker, they're not non-existent. So you cannot just ignore them altogether because if you do, your physique will just look weird. And as for the second template, it is the exact same exercise selection and volume. The only difference being that it's a different split. So the frequency is different since you start with the lower day and you close the program with the upper two. It is up to you to decide which one of these works best for you. Just like it is up to you to include neck movements in the form of neck curls within the program following the guidelines I already shared with you. And with that, you have everything you need to know to start running this Berserk program. Zod's body is indeed worthy of the nickname Immortal. And anyone who wishes to get close to that monstrous physique needs to be prepared to spend years chasing that goal. If you believe it to be impossible, you are right. And if you believe it to be possible, you are also right. It all comes down to how much and for how long you are willing to struggle. So remember this, we are all subjects of fate, but only those crazy enough to grab the demon by the horns can be called its masters. I gave you the program. It is now up to you to muster up the guts to go after it with everything you have. Lift on, struggler.